Hello everyone, Chris Clamp here again, and welcome back to my studio. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Chris Clamp. I'm an oil painter and a bit of an art world insider due to my time working at a high-end commercial art gallery. I started this channel here on YouTube to pass along some of the tips and tricks I've picked up along the way to help you improve your arts career. <music> Well, I just got back to the studio after a long trip, um, not the one that, that I've been posting images about over the past couple weeks where I went to Europe. I might make a video about that later. I just got back to the studio from a small little day trip to my college alma mater. I attended a university in South Carolina, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, called Winthrop University. The liberal arts college that uh, had a tremendous impact on my life. At the time when I was attending colleges, there weren't really the atelier or academy movement that there is today for traditional classical artwork. If those existed back then, I may have really been interested in that and tried to pursue it. However, I really could only go to schools within my state due to my financial situation. So even if they those were available and I kind of knew about them, I probably couldn't have gone. I certainly didn't have the skills for it back then anyway. Regardless, Winthrop University had a huge impact on my life. And I could go on and on and on about all the ways that it formed me into the person I am today. But anyway, Perhaps another day about that. Right now, what I want to talk about is something more about motivation. We all need more motivation in our studio practice and in our lives to achieve the goals that we would like to achieve. And also to realize the potential in ourselves that maybe others see within ourselves. While I was at Winthrop today, I spoke to the student body about art and business. I can really recall when I was in their position and I was a senior in college and I did not know what was next. I've spent the past four years trying to improve all of my artistic skills and enhance all of my conceptual ideas and and, and just also pay my bills, you know, I have an apartment and all this. So I was just trying to survive, but put all the pieces together. When you finish school, it's not like you're given a blueprint. Like here's the places to contact or just wait and the people will contact you. Like you're not even really given that kind of stuff. At least I wasn't when I was in school. Uh, I had to put the pieces together, and, and fortunately, I was able to put them together. And I've had a very interesting life so far, and hopefully, this is just the beginning. Anyway, I feel like colleges like Winthrop University are doing more to help prepare their students on their journey post graduation. And um, inviting me in and other people like me to talk to the student body about what they should consider next and how to put the pieces together is um, something that I take great pride in and um, it's an honor to come back and speak to the students and help them out, a position that I once was in. Uh, and one thing I often tell everyone is give back whenever you can. Someone helped you get to the position that you are in, whatever position that is. So it is kind of your duty to also give back while you can. So the idea of artistic motivation is something that uh, I think we all need. We have all heard of the term imposter syndrome, and we all have that, I'm sure. 
I, I mean, I still do to this day and I probably will until my last. I feel like I'm an artist and I'm trying to push hard to make better and better art each day. But at the same point, I'm almost waiting for the shoe to drop and someone to say, that guy is a phony, <laughs> whatever that means. So we all need that little bit of motivation and inspiration to kind of push us through the next thing and uh, kick us out of our groove. I've made some bad choices along the way. Uh, however, I wouldn't be where I am today if I did not make the choices that I've made. Therefore, these choices cannot be considered bad. As many of you know, I worked at a commercial art gallery for 15 years, and I absolutely loved this job. Still to this day, I wish I were there again. I love the relationships I built with clients, with collectors, with artists that the gallery worked with. And I still have many of these relationships to this day, and many of these people are still friends of mine. I mean, my wife and I got married like a year and a half ago, and at the wedding ceremony, there were several of the artists that I used to work with over that period at the gallery. I mean, many of these artists traveled states, I mean, like, like eight hour drives to come and be a part of this important moment. Collectors I used to work with were also there. I mean, this is a, a, a life that is so special. I don't take any of it for granted, the relationships that I have. But those moments that were so formative when I worked at this gallery of building the, these relationships really taught me a lot about life and um, just working together and working with others. And, but there's room for all of us. Like when I was in school, I remember you flip through art magazines and you're seeing all of these art celebrities and you're reading about major art galleries, major art museums. And in your head, you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have a show there one day. I'm going to have a piece in that collection. When the truth is, in reality, we all will probably not. We will probably not live to see our work on the walls of the MoMA or some institution such as that, or one of the high-end art galleries like Larry Gagosian uh, or anything like that. And you know what? That is okay. And you probably wouldn't want that even if you had it because even though those institutions have a certain uh, polish and glamour to them, there's also a lot of strings attached and a lot of um, drama, things like that, I would imagine. So be thankful for where you are. Anyway, my point that I'm trying to make is there's a lot of room all in the middle. There are galleries that exist that are regional galleries that are, um, th that are all over this world, that are incredible galleries that you will show with and have an amazing career with. And, um, and those things are just so beautiful and so special. So those are reasons why sometimes like you might feel like you have to aim for the stars, but sometimes if you can just aim for somewhere better, you know, in the middle, you know, you might find what you're looking for. If you're aiming for the stars and every day you're just disappointed because I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there you're actually hurting yourself because you're always going to be thinking about how you are missing your mark. You're not there. You're not good enough. So you're setting yourself up for failure. So don't do that because that means when you go in the studio to paint, you're not going to enjoy what you're doing and everything you make, it, you're going to look at with a very hypercritical eye. So another thing that I want to share with you about that experience as well is when I left that position at the gallery, um, it wasn't so much that I really wanted to or uh, there was something better. Um, I had reached a point where it felt like it was time for me to move on. I was looking for more time of, in the studio in front of my easels uh, because I was quite often very, very busy with art fair travels and things like that. So another company, a fine art logistics company uh, out of New York 
had uh, recruited me. They were looking to open an office here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they had heard of me and they contacted me and pursued me and promised me many things. However, it was all smoke and mirrors. It was all a lie. I mean, I worked far more than I ever did uh, at the gallery in terms of being away from home. Um, I was always on the road. I was driving a large truck places. Uh, it, it, it just was uh, awful. It was a terrible decision. And I was uh, worked. I was just overworked. And unfortunately, one night, I just delivered an exhibition to a, a small regional museum. And uh, it was a Friday night. I know that. And I was driving back. It was raining. It was very late. And I really wanted to get back. To Charlotte. My Friday night, I had plans where I wanted to get back in the studio and try to get something done over the weekend. Um, but this was a long, long drive. And uh, unfortunately, it was a dangerous drive. And there was a car in front of me that uh, I didn't see until the last second. They, they were going extremely slow or practically stopped. I, all I know is they were just right there. And uh, fortunately, I was able to, to quickly uh, turn the vehicle and not make impact with them. But the vehicle that I was driving, the large truck that was empty, was just a dead weight. And I spun out of control. And the vehicle came to a stop and then tipped over and landed on the passenger side. Fortunately, I lived. I was not hurt. The, uh, the car that, that was causing all of this that, that, that I'd seen and just couldn't respond to quickly enough, but I guess I did. Anyway, there was no impact made or anything. Um, so there was no harm done. But it really taught me how precious life is and how special life is. And most importantly, how short it is. I mean, we can watch Netflix and doom scroll on our phones and second guess ourselves all the time. But that time that we're doing all of that, we're actually losing sight of our goals and the things that we really want to do and create, the mark that we want to leave on this world. So when all of this stuff happened, I realized how I had been missing a huge part of my duty, of things that I should be doing in my life. So I decided to quit immediately. I mean, the company I was working for was incredibly unresponsive and unhelpful. I'm calling and telling them that this terrible thing had happened. You know, what can I do? Police are here. I mean, how do I get home? It's like, it's like eight or 9 p.m. It's raining, it's dark, and I'm still like four hours away. Like, what, what do I do? And no help. So I immediately said, I'm done. I created an LLC and um, quit that job and started doing uh, fine art services as a uh, independent contractor, which was great. Absolutely great. It allowed me to set my own schedule and make the money that, I wanted to make. If I hustle and I make the money, then it is my money and I can keep it and I can choose how much I want to hustle at that point. And it allowed me to build the studio that I'm in today that you are in with me and many other things. And then whenever I had opportunities where I needed to focus on an exhibition or a commission, I could just stop booking clients and say, I'm really sorry. I can't help you right now. Here's someone that can. All I really want to share with you all right now is that idea of how short and precious things are like this cat. We all need to be taking advantage of the time that we have. And the time that we have is now. While I was at Winthrop, these thoughts were in my head because I'm seeing students there in this auditorium where I had once been uh, decades ago. And I'm looking into their faces and I'm seeing my face, you know, who I was a few decades ago. And I'm thinking, wow, 
I was terrified then, and I'm sure these students are now, but they're on the beginning of their journey. And in many ways, I would do anything to be able to go back and start my journey over again. I would correct a lot of things that I did along the way, things that could have been handled better. I, I would have done more with my time. I'm sure we all can look at ourselves and realize that we've, we've wasted a lot of time. And since I have turned the page on my life, and I'm living in many ways a, a second life, I am working hard at never wasting a moment. I tell my family how I feel about them, and I'm in the studio as much as possible creating the things that I want to do. Now, there are many other things I want to do that I haven't gotten to. Hopefully, I live long enough that I am able to tap into those things. If you all are watching me on Instagram, you may have noticed how my wife and I had gone to Europe a few weeks ago, and I was able to see things that I've always loved and have read about and researched, but never realized I would really be able to see them. I mean, being able to stand inside the Sistine Chapel and, and just look up and see how amazing the creation that, that Michelangelo made on that ceiling. It's, it's just something amazing. You, you, I can't put it into words. It's like Giorgio Vasari said, Michelangelo the divine. Like the, the, the creation that he had spun and the will of him, whether it was divine or not, uh, is, is just awe-inspiring. Um, and hopefully we all can find inspiration in these things and leave our mark on our future so other generations can also be inspired by this. Anyway, um, I guess that's all I have to say. I, I, I want to have a discussion more about art and I want to showcase some things in my studio when I'm working on and everything. Um, but I literally just came in uh, a few moments ago and I've been wanting to record a new video and I felt heavily inspired thanks to my visit to my old college and uh, grabbed my lamps and tripods and everything and set this up and wanted to talk with you. Um, so if you're a student that was at Winthrop, thanks for being there and for your questions. There were some great questions. Um, feel free to ask more if you have more. Um, those of you uh, that uh, are watching this video. Also, if you find this inspiring in any way, please click the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you have a comment or question, please leave it below. I really want to create a dialogue and a community here amongst all of us. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so as well. I plan on making more videos like this, more motivating content and more art related content as well and uh, also some fun demos, which you may be starting to see that I'm putting out as shorts um, and a couple long form things, but I'm, I'm still, still learning all this stuff, um, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. Take care.